Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a complex shaped wing in Pro Engineer using the variable sweep tool. Now, right here I have my leading and my trailing edge defined. And you'll notice a couple things that I have set up in relation to the coordinate system. And this is I've found is somewhat important. Uh, the most important thing is that your Z positive Z axis is pointing towards the tip of your wing. If you do that, it makes your wing making your wing a lot easier. You can still do it if you have this on the other side, but it's a lot easier to do it this way. So when using this method, I'd recommend having your wings made separately and then imported to your fuselage. Now, uh, another thing you'll notice here is that uh, my uh, leading edge is to the negative x-axis uh, direction. Uh, I found that that has been working better for me using this method. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to go to insert variable section sweep and we're going to select the leading edge first followed by the trailing edge. Now you notice that right away uh, the little arrow that was right here is gone. It's now a red arrow and behind it we have a little uh, X at the very point there and it's not at anywhere else. What this little X is, is that's going to be one starting point, the origin of our sketch that we're going to define in the front plane. So uh, let's go over here to our little menu section. Right now the default says it's going to sweep as a surface. We do not want that. We're going to want sweep as a solid. And then we're going to go over to references and you see how the origin uh, under the end column it has a little check mark. What that says it's going to be normal to the trajectory. So whatever we sketch is going to come out perpendicular to this line. So if we define something over here, when we get out here it's going to be perpendicular. If you were to look at it from the top, it, it would be sort of a flat surface like that where you originally find it to be flat along there. So we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and say constant normal direction. And what we need to do is define a direction. Well, the positive Z axis is a good direction, which is why we want uh, the positive Z axis pointing towards the tip of our wing. It makes everything a lot easier to use. Now, when you make your sections here, um, you can find that there is some errors depending on how you do this. One thing you want to avoid is having the sections out here uh, be uh, touching. You want them a little bit separate. So if you're going to make a World War II era plane where the, so the wings are sort of rounded, well, you can do that. Just make sure that the tip is not perfectly round. All right, Leave a little gap. It doesn't have to be very much. It could be a tenth of an inch or something like that, but it just has to be there. Uh, another thing is when you're coming into your base plane, which in my uh, set up here is the front plane, you do not want to come in perfectly tangent to it. So what I mean by that, if we're going to look at the top, I have one sketch for my leading edge and one sketch for my trailing edge, uh, which you can see right here, sketch one and sketch two. Now, I simply mirrored one sketch just for simplicity's sake, but you do see that I have two sketches over here. But when you come in here, you don't want to come in perfectly tangent. Uh, so what you want to do is come in at an angle and have a physical stop point. Um, and as long as it's not perfectly tangent, it will work. When you make it perfectly tangent, it creates a discontinuity error uh, with the plotting uh, tool that Pro Engineer uses. And in essence, the top part of your airfoil would go to infinity uh, if you did that because it's just getting so flat essentially that it can't do it. So uh, let's keep going here. Uh, so we got rid of our normal and we're now in norm constant normal direction. So now we're ready to sketch our cross section which is going to be our airfoil. So we're going to hit sketch here and you'll notice like I mentioned before the little X here is now our origin of this uh, sketch plane and the little point there is going to represent where whatever we sketch is defined to the leading edge and this little point here is going to be defining the trailing edge of our sketch. So basically what these two points allow uh, us to do is to scale automatically whatever we sketch here to the 
um, length in between the two lines. So at the end we're going to have a really small section and at the tip we're going at the root we're going to have a uh, really big section. So let's go ahead uh, and import our airfoil. Now we can't go and go sketch uh, data from file, file system, and import our sketch. Uh, that doesn't work because it's not going to be referencing to these two points. So what we actually need to do is build our airfoil sketch in here from our PTS files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by making oops, I'm going to start by making a spline on the top and on the bottom. Uh, if you've watched my previous uh, how to make wings in Pro Engineer video, uh, this would be very very useful to go back and review how to make your uh, airfoil section in your PTS file because uh, we're going to I'm going to assume that you know how to do that from here. So we're going to go in and you know what, um, let's make this simpler. Uh, just have the top one and do one at a time. So I'm going to go File and oh, we need a coordinate system. Well, that's not too hard to import. There's a coordinate system. It's right. It's un hidden underneath the point tool here. So now I can go ahead and double click and go File, select a coordinate system, and open from File. So let's do a real simple NACA airfoil and open and say yes. Now you notice that we have this really weird uh, curve on the bottom here. It's not our airfoil. But if you zoom in over here, all of a sudden, hey, there's our airfoil. Now this is one problem that we have to address while using this um, setup. When we're using normal blend, we can scale our section very, very easily because our section is defined for a unit length one. Whatever units you're using, this is going to be a total of one of those units long. And as you can see, it's obviously much smaller than um, my total length here. So what I need to do is actually make a new PTS file. I can't use the one that's originally downloaded and I converted way back when, who knows when. So I'm going to show you how to make that work. So we're going to cancel out of this and because we ran into an error where we couldn't do something we have to cancel out of the trajectory and the variable section sweep. You have to basically start all over again when you make an error in there. But that's no big deal since we didn't do too much in there. So what I did was I opened up our uh, airfoil. This is just an example. And you'll notice that we go from 0 to 1 in the x direction. And what we need to do is basically multiply this by whatever length our uh, distance is from here to here. Now I happen to design this setup that I know what that distance is. So we can go into any spreadsheet, uh, Excel or OpenOffice, which I'm using here because I didn't really want to download Excel and pay money for that. Um, what I did over here on the left hand side was I copied in the original uh, numbers. So we go from 0 to 1 and from 0 to 0. And we don't go that high. And what I did was I made a formula over here on the right hand side. And I'll double click here and you see that I have A2 which is that cell right there times the length that I, final length that I need this to be which happens to be 38.25 units. And I think I'm using inches here, so that'll be 38.25 inches, so just over a yard. And so I, you can hit enter and then click on that cell and you notice this little box here and you'll see my mouse just changed a little bit if, you can, if the graphics will work out for this. And you basically just drag down, so you drag your uh, formula to apply to all these different cells. So if I click on this cell, I get A18, which is that one right there times the constant. So it works wonders and I do the same thing over here so I scale it properly and what I then do is just select all and then copy it and then paste it into a new sketch file. Uh, sorry, a new uh, text document. So this is what I came up with to be our example. Uh, you notice it's not very nice, but it will work uh, because everything is separated by a tab. Uh, so if you want to make a really, really simple formula in an Excel file, uh, I recommend go ahead and doing that. Um, I might post this if 
people are having a, little, a lot of trouble doing this, but it's really, really simple, basic spreadsheet work. Uh, so I have I'm saved the PTS files. So we'll go in and start our variable section sweep over again. And we'll select solid, go to our references. You can see a little bit better this time. I'll select the leading edge, hold down control, and select the trailing edge. Go to constant normal direction, z-axis, go to sketch. And so now we have to recreate our sketch file, so I input our coordinate system there. Make our spline connecting the point from the leading edge to the point to the trailing edge. That is how we actually make sure that our sketch will fit in here and work. So now we go to the bottom, and now we have all that set up. So I'll double click on that, select the coordinate system from file, and here we go, variable section sweep upper.pts. Yes, and there we go, there we have the airfoil that's going across the whole section. So we'll accept and do the same procedure to the bottom. And there we go, there's our airfoil. So we'll accept that and we will accept this sketch. And you can see now I have a yellowed out uh, example of what this wing can look like. And that looks to be what I want it to be like. So if you look out here, we have a very, very small version of our airfoil. And we have a very, very big version back there. So there is a very, very easy way to make complex shapes with this. Now, cur the current limitation to this is I have currently figured out how to do this in two dimensions. That is, uh, I can you can only look from the top and do this. I'm currently working on how to make a three-dimensional shape, so if you looked at it from the top, you'd see your own shape there. And if you looked from the side here, you'd come up and out, sort of like a uh, airliner's wing. And that's what I'm trying to figure out how to do right now using this shape, because I f think that it would be a very, very easy way to make a very, very uh, complex wing. Uh, you can, however, use this for your tail section, um, like your vertical stabilizer fin, uh, or for older uh, planes, like your World War II era propellers, because uh, they generally had a very, very flat wing. Uh, they didn't usually have any angle to them. And you can get a very, very nice curve by using this method. Uh, so if you want to make this even look even more pointier or more rounder, however your section is going to look like, uh, you can make this as small as you want as long as it's still uh, within your margin of accuracy. Uh, so that's that's it, uh, dealing with how small you actually make it. I'd recommend not going 0 .0000000001 out from your center axis. I'd try to go like a tenth of an inch at the smallest it'll still look fine and it'll still well represent the plane you're trying to model so I hope this was helpful uh, if you have any questions uh, post it below and I will get back to you as soon as I can on that